Wilson Morales from Black Women TV. Hey, folks, how's it going? Hi, how's it going? Hey, yes, indeed. Hello, Wilson. Hey, hey, you know, it's never easy talking about your life, you know, in public. So uh, how did this come about in which you let Matthew follow you around telling this story? John? <laughs> I wanted to do a film about the symphony and the building of the symphony. And it started out as a process film, the creative process. And then that changed within about a month of deciding to film, we get the news that I was nominated for 11 Grammys across seven different categories. In the same week as we get the news that Sulaika is re-diagnosed with leukemia. So we have to decide, do we want to continue forward filming? And we decided every other week, it was a decision that we would continually reassess. So it was... Um, building trust along the way, trusting that there was a bigger purpose for having the cameras there, and also just um, staying true to the original vision of a documentary, which is to listen along the way and let it tell you what it wants to be. John has been a spotlight for a long time. Obviously, this, that's how the documentary started. But for you, so like, uh, you know, you've not been in the spotlight, and now we're following your life and hearing your story. What were your initial thoughts in terms of like, let's keep it going? You know, how much was going to be left on camera and what's going to be left out? Mm. So, you know, so often stories of illness are told from the vantage point of someone who survived. And the reality is when we embarked on making this documentary, I didn't know if I was going to survive long enough to see the film. Um, but it felt important to me to show what it's like to be in the trenches of uncertainty when you don't know what's going to happen. That's the case for so many of us in the world today. And I think that experience of uncertainty, that experience of not knowing, um, along with the highest highs that we were experiencing and the lowest lows felt um, you know, representative of so much of the duality of life. Um, and so in a way, embracing that uncertainty became one of the themes of the film and a theme of our life as we were moving through it. How much were you working with Matthew in terms of balancing out? As you mentioned earlier, you wanted to make sure you kept the, the focal point going on. But, you you know, there's three stories, you know, we're getting. We're getting who you are and how you came to be, you know, what you're trying to set out and, you know, her story. You know, and then balancing it out back and forth so that way at the end of the day, we get an uplifting, enjoyable film, you know, in certain terms. So there's got to be, so the work goes with the editor, you know, because yeah. we don't want to, at the end of the day, like, we don't want, you know, you look at the log line, like, ah, oh, this is going to be depressing, you know, like, no, we want to smile. <laughs> well, you know, he has so, 1,500 so hours of footage, 1,500 hours of footage. 1,500 hours. Yes. So that was one of the big discussions the whole time we were discussing how do we make all of the narratives work without flattening any of the characters because it, and, and flattening any of the themes. You know, the, the beauty of a, of a film where you have many narratives at once is that if you can figure out a way to put them all together as one, it's very powerful. But the danger with that is in the edit, you might dilute all of your themes. So we really, really had a lot of discussion about that. All props to Matt and also Lauren Domino, who's an incredible producer on this film from New Orleans as well. But uh, Lauren and Matt sat in the edit room and, you know, processed our discussions and whoever else they were talking to. They're probably talking to a, a whole pile of people and, uh -huh. and getting information about, OK, this is what we think. And they made the movie. And we had a lot of input in terms of just our part, Sulaika has a whole vision of how she wanted to be portrayed and what she wanted to, to be true to her career and her writing. I have my vision of the symphony and how I wanted it to be portrayed. But at the end of the day, it's a Matt Heineman film. So we had to trust uh -huh. that he's taking all of our conversation and feedback. And um, he really did a great job with that. Uh -huh. Where are you now? Like, what's the status now? Obviously, people are going to watch this, you know, starting today, you know, and they're, we're all going to Google, like, what's the status now? Is this was shot some time back? You know, we see you talking. So where are you now in the stages? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So thank God I am doing well. I'm here. Um, it feels like a real full circle moment uh, to get to see the film. Um, but you know, an experience like when we went through, when you're confronted with your mortality, um, inevitably is an invitation to reshuffle your priorities to what really matters. And so, um, you know, there's heartbreak that comes with illness, but there are also certain unexpected gifts. And so for us, you know, holding on to that sense of love, of family, of community is front and center um, for, for each day. As I watched this movie and I watched the end, I love the song at the end. You know, talk to me about putting that that song together. I, I happened to, a couple of years ago, well, eons ago, I had a radio show called Soundtrack, you uh -huh. know, where we played the music of movies, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm always into, like, listening to the background of, of movies, the song, and I, and I heard the song. I'm like, this is actually not bad. And then I had to shazam it, see if it's on Spotify. I got because I need it. <laughs> <laughs> it's indeed. Talk to me about, about putting this song together. <laughs> Soundtrack. We got to bring that back. That's a good, uh, that's a cool idea. Uh, mm -hmm. I really love film music. And obviously we had this film full of music and we were talking at the end of the process about the final credit song. Cause traditionally you have a final credit song and it was so hard to think of something to write that was true to the moment. So I went back to a lullaby that I wrote for Sulaika when she was in the hospital. I composed lullabies when she was in the hospital to fill the room with a, a sense of peace so she could rest with all the sounds you hear in the hospital. And she was painting and we were creating together by doing this. In many moments, it was, um, it was a, a great memory that you don't even see in the film necessarily, the, uh, the painting you see, but you don't see these moments of creativity that we shared in the hospital room. So the song actually came from those moments of creativity where I was writing lullabies. One of the themes for It Never Went Away came from one of those lullabies. Mm -hmm. Congrats on your recent Grammy nominations. You know, I, I read that now you can be there instead of watching it on TV. You know, as we saw it there, you know, so now, you, it's, you know, it's like you never know when something's going to come around again, you know. And it's sort of like one of those, like, listen, now you can be there and you can experience it. Uh, and I always say, listen, there's a lot of product that's out there on streaming channels, TV, whether or not you go to the theaters. You know, uh, what's going to get people to, to watch your story, you know, to be engaged in watching the story when it hits Netflix? You know, it's like we're watching, you know, you, uh, we're going to get to know you more because not everybody knew so much about your background, but now we're going to hear your story and, you know, your survival. And obviously you keep fighting and say, listen, you know, to be uplifting because people want to hear these stories. People want to see it as, listen, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's some challenges, you know, that everybody has to go through. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, what do you say to people when they watch this? What do you want them to get out of it besides knowing John's story, but your story? Mm. You know, so we all have these life interrupted moments where we're brought to our knees, be it by illness or loss or some other kind of heartbreak. And what I really hope people take away from this film is that, you know, survival really is its own kind of creative act. You don't have to be a musician. You don't have to be a writer to benefit from the gifts of creativity. But in those moments when the ceiling caves in on you, you have an opportunity to reimagine who you are, to reimagine your world and what really matters to you. Um, and so I hope people, you know, walk away with that message of possibility, with the tenacity of the human spirit and our ability to reinvent ourselves in the face of even the greatest adversity um, and, and also a sense of love. Uh, we're in a time where we're more divided than we've ever been and I think love is something that we don't talk about enough, um, but for us and, and certainly in those seven months when we were shooting the film, um, love was the through line that kept us together both individually and um, as a couple. Congratulations, fun fact, John, you and I share the same birthday. 
So now I'm gonna say that's, that's my brother from another mother. Yeah, yeah. On this, you know. <laughs> so keep it going. We're now kin, one way yeah. or the other. Take care of yourselves. I'm sure I'll see you down the road. <laughs> yes, indeed. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>